Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So uh, until now we have been talking about uh, materials uh, which is one of the three different aspects of tissue engineering right. So uh, we will now move on to the next aspect which is cells. So uh, any tissue engineering application you want cells along with the scaffolds uh, many a times uh, cells are also used by themselves uh, without a scaffold just for regeneration of tissues. So, uh, it is important for us to know what types of cells are being used, where we can get them and uh, how we can harvest them and whether we can uh, culture them to get more number. So, because we might not be able to get enough numbers just by isolation from uh, host tissue. So, we might have to culture them. So, it is important for us to understand all these concepts. So, for we will first start with uh, the source of cells. So, cells are basically of three different types, we have already discussed this earlier. So, you have autologous cells which are cells from the same individual, allogenic cells which are cells from another individual of the same species and xenogenic is uh, cells from another species altogether. So, the there are different sources for these types of cells. So, you could either have differentiated cells uh, of the tissue type or you could use uh, stem cells and fetal cells or embryonic cells or you could use uh, cells which are of a different type in the sense that you might be trying to uh, culture, uh, you might be trying to engineer bone, but you would probably have uh, osteoblasts which is the type of cell present in bone along with endothelial cells which is not specific for that bone uh, for the tissue type, but it has its own role in uh, tissue engineering right. So, you could use cells of this kind of types. There are also studies where people have shown that one type of cell can be converted to another type of cell even if it is a somatic cell means without actually taking them to the pluripotent state you could just uh, trans differentiate them from one to another type. So, there are different things which people have worked on. So, we will try to understand some of the fundamentals and uh, take it from there. So, uh, autologous, allogenic and xenogenic uh, have their own advantages and disadvantages. With respect to autologous cells, the biggest advantage is there is no risk of disease transmission or immune rejection. Uh, whereas, in case of, uh, whereas the disadvantage is there is only limited availability and uh, you would be injuring the site from where you are harvesting the cells. Allogenic cells uh, have greater availability and are less expensive. However, there is risk of immune rejection and uh, disease transmission and you would also end up with a heterologous population when you act use cells from another uh, individual. So, xenogenic cells are cells from other species which means they are the most abundant and the least expensive. So, you can actually get it from uh, organisms which can be grown for harvesting these cells. Uh, but there is a much higher risk of disease transmission and immune rejection. So, it is uh, important to balance these advantages and disadvantages. So, people do try to use autologous cells as much as possible, however, it is not readily available. In many cases what people do is they try to harvest autologous cells and then culture them, expand them to get uh, desired numbers and then use it for uh, treatment of uh, the injured site. So, in the introduction lectures we had actually talked about uh, using autologous cells for chondrocyte, uh, autologous chondrocytes for uh, regeneration of cartilage right. So, those kinds of things are uh, very commonly done even today. So, differentiated cells and stem cells also have their own advantages and disadvantages. Differentiated cells have the required functionalities which are uh, needed for the tissue to function the way we expect them to. Disadvantage is uh, you would cause donor site morbidity and uh, in vitro growth is actually more difficult. It does not, uh, you cannot culture them for multiple passages, they actually die after some time. Uh, they are more expensive, uh, stem cells on the other hand are uh, less expensive and there are different sources from which you can get stem cells. 
they can be used for many applications. If you have one type of stem cell, then you can try to differentiate it into different cells and use it for different applications. So, those are some of the advantages of stem cells. However, the disadvantages they do not uh, have the functionality, which means you need to differentiate them properly to get the desired functionality and they may not do that, they may not differentiate as required. So, there could always be uh, an issue with differentiation, especially when you have any you expect differentiation to happen in vivo. So, in vitro you have a lot more control with uh, what the cells are exposed to and how you actually treat the uh, cells to get the di required differentiation, whereas in vivo the level of control you have is lesser. Okay. There is also a risk of uncontrolled growth and differentiation. So, this is especially true for uh, embryonic stem cells uh, which might lead to formation of teratomas uh, which could be a problem. So, uh, the limited availability of differentiated autologous cells uh, is one of the limitations why people have started uh, people looked for stem cells and other sources and uh, morbidity and limited proliferative capacity are serious limitations when you are talking about expanding the cells. As I was saying we would not be able to harvest enough cells right. So, if you are trying to harvest a lot of cells then you will cause significant damage to the donor tissue. So, you try to harvest only uh, smaller numbers and then you have to expand them and expanding them is also a problem because they do not grow as rapidly and they only multiply for a few passages, they do not uh, multiply uh, for a long time. So, the that is a problem. So, because of that uh, using autologous differentiated cells is um, not very easy for many applications. So, with respect to undifferentiated cells uh, the limitations are different for the different kind of uh, stem cells you use. With uh, embryonic stem cells there is a chance of teratoma formation, teratoma is a tumor which con tumor containing tissues which is derived from three embryonic layers which is the endoderm, mesoderm and uh, ectoderm and there is also uh, a chance of uncontrolled differentiation in vivo and uh, this these are technical difficulties and you also have ethical questions when you are talking about uh, embryonic stem cells. Right. Mesenchymal stem cells have a problem because they fail to differentiate into desired cell types in vivo uh, even though it the people have repeatedly shown that in vitro differentiation is very successful. So, because of this it is not very easy to use these stem cells uh, for in vivo applications. So, many a times what people do is they use stem cells and differentiate them. Uh, so, they expand them and then differentiate them in vitro and finally, then place them in the uh, site of implantation. So, those are some of the challenges with uh, stem cells. So, what are stem cells? So, stem cells are cells that have the ability to divide for indefinite periods of time uh, in culture and can give rise to specialized cells. So, they themselves uh, do not have any special functions. So, they are undifferentiated and uh, they can differentiate into different types of cells. So, uh, there are three different uh, types of stem cells, they are called as a totipotent, pluripotent and multipotent stem cells. So, uh, totipotent stem cells are the cells which can form all types of cells in the body and the extra uh, embryonic cells, so which are the uh, placenta. Right. So, it can form all of that and embryo and the uh, first few divisions of the embryo are the totipotent stem cells which can actually form any type of tissue. So, the totipotent stem cells have the ability to actually develop into a whole organism, whereas the uh, pluripotent stem cells can form all the cell types in the body, but they cannot actually form the extra embryonic or the placental cells. So, those are the pluripotent cell, stem cells. So, embryonic stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells are examples for such pluripotent stem cells. Multipotent stem cells are the ones which can develop to more than one cell type, but are more limited than uh, pluripotent stem cells. They cannot form all the cell types, but they can form a significant number of cell types. Yeah. yeah. Sir, are stem cells in umbilical cord multipotent? Yes. So, the cord blood uh, cells are uh, multipotent stem cells only embryonic stem cells are uh, pluripotent. So, totipotent cells can differentiate into extra embryonic membranes and tissues and the embryo and all the post embryonic tissue and organs, which means it basically has all the potential to develop into a whole organism. So, embryo is basically a totipotent uh, cell. 
So, uh, the stem cells are broadly classified as adult stem cells and embryonic stem cells based on uh, where you get it from right. So, if you are getting it from an adult uh, organism then it is an adult stem cell and if you are developing an embryo from which you are harvesting these stem cells then it is called an embryonic stem cell. Adult stem cells are actually present in different parts of the body. So, they are multipotent and these were discovered almost 50 years ago and uh, more than 50 years ago now. Uh, embryonic stem cells are found in uh, developing embryos and fetuses, these are pluripotent and uh, these were first isolated in 1998. They can multiply more readily and seem far more proficient compared to adult stem cells. So, uh, when you are talking about the three major types of uh, stem cells of totipotent, pluripotent and multipotent. So, uh, the uh, potency of the totipotent uh, stem cells is much higher than that of pluripotent and uh, multipotent and um, cell types which are capable of, uh, which they are capable of generating uh, totipotent can generate any type of cell uh, including the extra embryonic cells whereas, uh, pluripotent can differentiate to form all the three germ layers which we talked about. So, whereas, uh, it cannot form the extra embryonic tissue and uh, multipotent is limited to certain cell types. So, examples are uh, zygotes and early morula which is the first few cell divisions of the uh, embryo and embryonic stem cells would be pluripotent stem cells and induced pluripotent stem cells are uh, also pluripotent. Uh, hematopoietic cell cells, uh, mesenchymal stem cells, neural stem cells are all examples of uh, multipotent stem cells. So, these are basically are different types of adult stem cells. And, uh, Totipotent stem cells are found in the fertilized egg and the early cells of the fertilized egg and uh, pluripotent stem cells which is the embryonic stem cell is found in the inner mass of a blastocyst. An embryo develops for a few uh, days and it forms something called a blastocyst which is a cell mass. The inner cell mass of this blastocyst is uh, embryonic stem cell and uh, multipotent stem cells are obtained from different uh, tissues. The advantage uh, of each of them is uh, totipotent stem cells are easy to isolate and grow uh, and pluripotent are also easy to isolate and grow. So, you can get uh, a lot of them you can, it can easily be cultured, uh, but with multipotent stem cells there is less ethical issues and uh, there is less chance of immune rejection uh, because there is a potential for it to be taken from the same person. Right? So, you can get an autologous stem cell and actually culture it and use it. So, cord blood cells and things like that that is why people to store cord blood hoping that they would be able to use these uh, multipotent stem cells eventually. So, the disadvantage is uh, with uh, totipotent and uh, pluripotent is the ethical issue and uh, with pluripotent stem cells there is also chance of teratoma formation and uh, multipotent stem cells are very difficult to isolate and they have limited differentiation and they are not available uh, in large numbers. So, when you aspirate uh, blood from bone marrow it is not very easy to get uh, stem cells, you get only a very few stem cells for the aspiration you get. So, those are some of the problems. So, teratoma is like a cancer tissue which uh, contains tissues from all the three derm layers. Okay. So, it can it is a problem with uh, embryonic stem cells specifically and uh, IPSCs may also have the same problem, but people are trying to understand that. So, see adult stem cells are primarily obtained uh, large sources uh, the umbilical cord blood or tissue and uh, there are also cells from brain, cornea, retina, heart, fat, uh, skin, dental pulp, uh, bone marrow, blood vessels, skeletal muscles, intestines everywhere right. So, these are uh, just places where you get different adult stem cells and uh, the number of cells you harvest uh, will depend on the source itself. So, umbilical cord obviously has the uh, most abundant and uh, bone marrow has significant numbers whereas, if you were to take it from uh, dental pulp or other places the numbers are usually smaller. Sir, I am not sure I read somewhere that recently they isolated stem cells from teeth. Yeah, that is the dental pulp. Oh. So, so the teeth has a pulp in the root and that is where you can actually harvest it from. So, um, embryonic stem cells uh, are obtained from fertilized egg usually through in vitro fertilization. The ohm has uh, had uh, a nucleus removed and a nuclear membrane uh, material is injected from the intended recipient uh, 
which is called it can be reproductive or therapeutic cloning to get um, the uh, in vitro fertilized eggs which you culture for a few days and then finally get it. So, the question is always about the ethics of this. So, uh, some of the unique properties of stem cells is they are capable of dividing and renewing themselves for long periods. So, stem cells can multiply for many months in the lab and uh, they are capable of long term self renewal in the sense that uh, even when they are differentiating they will maintain the numbers and uh, un uh, they are unspecialized which means they do not have any speci uh, tissue specific structures. So, they can actually be differentiated into different types of cells. Uh, they can give rise to specialized cell types uh, which are uh, um, which will happen through the process of differentiation. So, differentiation actually uh, does not happen as one step it goes through multiple steps where the cells become more and more specialized and uh, finally, they get committed to one lineage and form one particular type of cells. So, adult stem cells uh, typically generate the uh, cell type uh, of the tissue where they are uh, obtained from. So, if you take hematopoietic stem cells it will form different types of blood uh, blood cells right. So, uh, it can be differentiated into other cell types by forceful uh, differentiation, but uh, in general it is uh, it can differentiate only to those types of cells ok. Uh, adult stem cells are undifferentiated cells which uh, reside in the differentiated tissues uh, progenitors and precursors are formed before you fully form uh, form the fully differentiated cells these are the uh, intermediary steps of the differentiation process. Uh, these are uh, progenitors are however, committed to a lineage whereas, um, the stem cells are not. So, that is the difference. So, although in some cases people do try to use them uh, interchangeably it is not scientifically correct uh, progenitor is already committed. So, one example would be endothelial progenitor cells. So, these can only form endothelial cells right, but they are not fully for developed into endothelial cells, but they can actually uh, grow at a much faster rate compared to endothelial cells. So, the function of adult stem cell is to maintain tissue homo homeostasis and uh, replace the cells which are lost uh, due to normal tissue turnover injury or disease. Okay. Uh, bone marrow uh, is where the first set of uh, stem cells were identified and uh, hematopoietic stem cells were identified in 1961 and 63 and these can form the RBCs, WBCs and platelets and uh, bone marrow stromal cells were identified uh, in 1970 and they have been shown to form uh, bone cartilage fat and uh, hematopoietic supporting stroma and so on. So, stem cells um, have the self renewal property because of something called asymmetric division. So, what happens is uh, whenever you have uh, asymmetric division there are two daughter cells which can have two different cellular fates. When you have mitosis uh, the two daughter cells formed are exactly identical and they have the same fate even with meiosis that is what happens right. Meiosis also you form two daughter cells which have the same fate they can only be uh, gametes they cannot be anything else. Whereas, here that is not what ha happens you have asymmetric division where the stem cells which divide one will be a stem cell which means the self renewing property is maintained. So, one stem cell forms one stem cell and another cell which can get differentiated into any type of cell. So, your cell uh, stem cell population remains the same ok the number of stem cells in their population remains the same. So, uh, basically one daughter cell has the same potency which is the self renewing property. So, it is a stem cell and the other one can either be a uh, stem cell or be stimulated for further differentiation. So, usually what happens is uh, this uh, daughter cell which has a different uh, uh, fate can actually multiply before it gets differentiated that is what happens because uh, after complete differentiation if the uh, multiplication has to happen then it will be much slower. So, multiplication usually happens before complete differentiation. So, that is why these progenitor cells are important. So, these progenitor cells will actually divide uh, at a faster rate, but they are already committed to the lineage. So, they cannot they would not come back to the previous step they will actually get differentiated to the final type of cells. So, hematopoietic stem cells are the ones which are obtained from the bone marrow. Uh, so, the way you harvest them is an invasive procedure obviously, you have to drill into the bone marrow to get it. So, it is not a very preferred mechanism for a harvesting, but that is the only way you can harvest hematopoietic stem cells. Uh, they can also be released into peripheral blood uh, by a process called mobilization. So, uh, 
this mobilization can actually be induced by treatment with uh, cytokines and thereby you can actually get them into the peripheral blood and then try to draw them. So, blood from the placenta or umbilical cord would also have hematopoietic stem cells, uh, these are uh, much easier sources to harvest these uh, stem cells. Mesenchymal stem cells are the ones which are extensively studied, they are obtained from the bone marrow of the iliac crust or the femoral head from a patient who is usually undergoing a total hip replacement. So, you do not uh, harvest mesenchymal stem cells only for that purpose because it will be a quite a painful procedure. So, iliac crest is from your uh, hip and you can get it from your sternum which is uh, the joint between your rib cage and uh, you can also get it from the femoral head, femur is the bone in your uh, thigh and uh, the head which gets into the ball and uh, uh, socket joint that is also uh, that is the head from where you can get these. And uh, adipose derived stem cells can be obtained from fat tissues uh, usually which is taken after liposuction and uh, adipose derived stem cells have also been differentiated to various types of cells and they have been uh, effective in using for uh, tissue engineering applications. Epithelial cells are usually found in the bulge uh, containing region of the hair follicle and uh, these uh, as I said the numbers would be small, it is difficult to harvest them, but they do have uh, the same uh, multipotency, multipotency as uh, mesenchymal stem cells. Other stem cells are uh, neuronal stem cells, model, uh, multipotent adult progenitor cells and uh, cells uh, which are present in your connective tissues and muscle derived stem cells. So, these are all the different adult stem cells which have been used for uh, different tissue engineering applications. So, uh, multilineage potential of the adult human mesenchymal stem cells was demonstrated in uh, 1999 uh, by Pittinger et al and uh, this was published in science and uh, this is one of the um, extensively cited papers which has almost 23,000 citations uh, currently. And uh, so, this these were uh, these are cells which were previously called as a plastic adherent uh, colony forming units fibroblasts. So, the term mesenchymal was coined uh, in this 1999 paper. So, uh, what happened was uh, Pettinger et al demonstrated that these human mesenchymal stem cells have a multilineage potential and they form uh, adipocytes, chondrocytes and osteoblasts. So, uh, the, they also showed that these um, mesenchymal stem cells uh, had um, heterogeneity with uh, growth rate, phenotypic uh, plasticity and uh, colony morphology when cultured in different conditions. So, initially they were identical right. So, when you harvest these mesenchymal stem cells they are all identical all the morphology all the properties are the same, but when you culture them in different conditions they became different. Uh, cells completely different and that was uh, shown to actually uh, that was shown for the first time in this paper. So, stem cells uh, are present in your body in a place called uh, stem cell niche. So, st uh, this is uh, a micro environment which is well controlled to maintain the uh, stemness of the cells. Okay. So, uh, this is a specific location in which the cells can reside for an indefinite period of time. Uh, without actually uh, differentiating. So, they will they can produce progeny while self renewing in the sense that they can go through asymmetric division and the cell which is fated towards uh, differentiation will leave the stem cell niche and the cell which is uh, going to remain with the same uh, multipotency will remain in the niche itself. So, uh, this is one of the issues when we handle stem cells, we do not have the stem cell niche outside the body. So, you can have the stem cells, but they do not behave the same way. When you have it in, in a stem cell niche, they have certain properties which are uh, which will be lost when you take it out of them. So, there are different types of stem cell niches. So, you have a simple stem cell niche. So, these are basically uh, niches where the stem cells are locked to the niche by adherent junctions and uh, to the extracellular matrix uh, through different junctions like integrins. So, the niche position of the stem cells is to receive intercellular signals that control the growth and inhibit differentiation. So, uh, in a complex uh, niche different stem cells might be localized in the same niche and uh, more cell types 
can contribute to the niche instead of just one single cell type contributing to the niche. The storage niche is uh, the stem cell niche where the cells are just stored, the cells are quiescent uh, inside this. These are act as the reserve of stem cells uh, and they are activated only at uh, during injury or uh, some kind of damage to the tissues, so that these cells can actually go and repair the injured tissue. So, progenitor cells are cells which are more specific than the stem cells and uh, they can differentiate for a limited number of times. These are not self renewing, uh, but in some literature you would see that they are using it interchangeably which is not correct. Uh, endothelial progenitor cells or pancreatic progenitor cells are cells which are committed towards uh, the particular lineage. So, uh, embryonic stem cells were um, first isolated from mice in uh, 1981. So, it was done by two different groups independently. And in 1998, human embryonic stem cells were isolated uh, by Thomson et al. And these are isolated from the inner cell mass of the blastocyst and uh, can be expanded in the lab while maintaining the pluripotency. So, this is what is done so uh, for isolation of uh, embryonic stem cells. So, the what you see to get the embryo out of a, so if it is natural fertilization you would have to get the embryo out of the uh, ovarian duct right. So, then that would mean flushing of the duct which will destroy the embryo as well. So, that is not really an option. So, because of this you need to uh, uh, you need to do uh, in vitro fertilization that is how you create these embryos for uh, getting these embryonic stem cells. So, surplus embryos during uh, IVF treatment uh, can be used uh, uh, for this. So, this needs to be donated by the parents after informed consent. So, uh, so in India you cannot pay for these things as well. So, uh, whereas abroad uh, people do pay for some of these donations which people make. So, even when uh, for blood collection in the US uh, we used to go and give blood uh, very commonly for research. because. Uh, many of my friends were working with blood and they would need 30 ml blood uh, for research and so they will call one of one of, our, one of us and we will go and give blood, we will get like 20 dollars or 30 dollars. So, that we used to do that quite regularly, but uh, in India you are not allowed to do that because uh, you can exploit the poor uh, in name of doing that. So, in the US you only exploit the grad students. <laughs> So, uh, so zygotes are uh, produced in through in vitro fertilization and they are cultured to form the blastocyst phase and instead of so at this stage usually what happens is this is uh, placed inside the womb for it to develop into a fetus. So, here instead of that the blastocyst is used for isolation of embryonic stem cells. So, there are only about 200 to 300 uh, 200 to 250 cells in the blastocyst and uh, 30 to 35 of them, 34 of them are is the inner cell mass and uh, the outer layer is removed and uh, either through mechanical surgery or through immunosurgeries and after that you take the inner cell mass and culture it on a feeder layer uh, and the colonies are mechanically dissected and transferred to new dishes. Uh, so, these need to be cared for daily so that you make sure that the differentiation does not happen because uh, when you are culturing it in vitro there could be stresses which are caused that could cause differentiation. So, you to maintain its stemness you need to make sure it is cared for and it needs it is uh, maintained in the way it, it can be. So, uh, you would always prefer to use this is for any cell. So, yeah. So, feeder layer is basically another cell uh, another mono layer of cells which is used on which the cells are cultured. So, usually they are fibroblasts, fibroblasts are cultured as feeder layers. So, uh, this goes for any cell type, uh, fresh non frozen cells are always preferred when you are talking about primary cells compared to frozen and thawed cells. So, uh, the cell lines which you use are different, those are immortalized. So, those yeah you can put it in uh, liquid nitrogen and then take it out and use it, but for primary cells you would not want to do that. So, that is why you need to harvest them regularly. So, this means it is a problem right, it is uh, you are not going to get uh, enough cells with respect to embryonic stem cells. So, there are also issues with respect to long term stability and uh, there are uh, cases where there is early differentiation. Uh, 
so when you culture these cells in 2D environment, there is the cells can actually pile up, right? So instead of forming a monolayer, once there is more cells, it can start piling up, and this will create stresses, uh, causing differentiation uh, around the edges or in the piled up areas. So these places would experience more stresses, and it results in uh, differentiation of cells. So, uh, you can actually use endogenous transcription factors to activate the cells uh, differentiation and uh, this using different growth factors, using uh, different um, cytokines and other markers, you can actually control how the cells are, are differentiated and uh, you can also co-culture with cell types uh, which are capable of lineage induction. So, there are st studies where people have shown that. Uh, uh, culturing endothelial sorry um, stem cells along with uh, pancreatic cells uh, islet cells uh, would cause them to differentiate to form islet like cells. So, those kinds of things are possible. So, iPSCs are the last type of uh, stem cells which we will quickly go into. So, these are basically somatic cells which are differentiated into induced pluripotent stem cells. So, this was first shown uh, in 2006 by Takahashi and Yamanaka. And what they showed was there were uh, a set of four genes which can actually be uh, transfected into the cells to form them uh, into pluripotent stem cells. So, uh, human iPSCs were then reported a, couple, a year later. So, uh, these cells have very similar properties as embryonic stem cells. So, uh, Yamanaka won the Nobel Prize in 2012 for physiology and medicine for this discovery. So, mouse iPSCs demonstrate certain important characteristics which are seen in uh, pluripotent stem cells, basically ex expression of stem cell markers, uh, ability for formation of uh, teratomas which are tumors containing all three germ layers and the ability to contribute to many different tissues when injected into uh, the embryo for uh, at early stages of development. So, uh, human iPSCs also have the similar uh, markers and uh, ability to form cells from all three germ layers. So, there is a lot of studies going on in this direction and uh, it is a very recent development right. So, less than 12 years old. So, uh, it is a very interesting domain.